Today's story is about a former professor who is accused of assaulting her husband, tying his hands and feet, gagging him with duct tape, and leaving him to die. In February 2020, around 6.45 p.m., a 911 call was made from a nearby condo at Simpson College in Iowa. A woman requested help stating that her husband was not breathing on the phone. When the paramedics arrived at the scene, the woman was performing CPR on the man. He was lying on the floor, and his lips appeared to be blue, indicating a lack of breath. Despite the immediate transfer of the husband to the hospital, he passed away that night. The deceased man worked as an engineer and had been employed in IT at a nearby airport. No signs of accident were found on his body, leading to suspicions of homicide. The wife, Park Gowan, has been taken into custody and is being transported to the police station. Park was born in 1979, and graduated from a university in Korea and entered the United States in 2000 with a student visa. She entered New York University for a master's program and ended up living in New Jersey. After she lived in New Jersey, she went to church on Sundays. While attending church, a new person appeared a man of the same age named Nam Sung Woo. They developed mutual fondness for each other and started dating. In 2010, after completing her master's degree at New York University, Park decided to continue her studies and began her doctoral program at the City University of New York. During her doctoral program, Park also served as an adjunct professor, guiding students from 2015 to 2017. Typically, students who completed their doctoral programs as international students in the United States face a dilemma. They had to decide whether to obtain a permanent residency and stay in the United States or return to their home country to teach students. In the case of those who came to the United States for their studies after growing up and becoming adults in Korea, it is extremely challenging to fully adapt to American culture. Not only that, but they also often struggle with speaking English fluently and may prefer to return to Korea. However, obtaining a teaching position at prestigious Korean universities is highly competitive, making it difficult to secure a job. Park also seemed to have faced these concerns. Finally, she decided to pursue a career in the United States. After obtaining her doctoral degree, she sent her resume to a lot of colleges in 2017, she was hired as an assistant professor at Simpson College in Iowa. She found a sponsor her employment visa, but she had to move to Iowa. She decided to move to Iowa and discussed it with her boyfriend, Nam Sung Woo. He congratulated her and told her that he could also go with her to Iowa. The two of them promised to get married and moved to the Simpson College area together, where they purchased a condo and started living together. It appeared that Nam had also found a job near the airport and they lived a normal newlywed life. Park held a wedding ceremony with Nam but for some reason, she told the students at school that she was unmarried. She claimed to have no family in the United States and that she had family in Korea. At school, Park was known as a single female professor with family in Korea. While it was not necessary to announce one's marital status in the United States, according to Thomas who attended her classes for three years, she frequently talked about why she wasn't married during class. And she never mentioned having a husband before. There was no sight of Nam on social media or anywhere else. The Korean church members they met in New Jersey also testified that they found out about the marriage after the incident occurred. According to the police announcement, on the day of the incident, Park tied her husband Nam to a wooden chair with cable ties at around 10.30 a.m. at their home. She then used a nylon rope to wrap his entire body around the chair, stuffed clothes into his mouth to prevent him from making noise and gagged him with duct tape. She further covered his eyes with a towel, preventing him from seeing ahead and wrapped additional duct tape around his eyes. This resembled a form of torture. What was even more shocking was that after tying up her husband in the morning, Park went about her daily life in the same house. It was around 5 p.m., six hours later when she checked on her husband and found him struggling to breathe, desperately demanding to be released. However, Park ignored this and continued with her daily routine. She drank a glass of champagne in the living room, watched a movie and fell asleep for about an hour. When she woke up and checked on her husband, he appeared to be bowing his head, unable to breathe properly. Around 6.45 p.m., Park called 911 for help. 
When the paramedic arrived around 6.50 p.m., she was performing CPR and there were no unusual items around and Nam was not bound. When they arrived, Nam's lips had turned blue, and there were ligature marks on front of his neck and throat. Park tried to conceal the binding items before police arrived on the scene. They urgently transferred him to the hospital but he died that night. The day after her husband's death, Park sent an email to her students, announcing that she would take a temporary break from teaching and postpone the midterm exams, citing a personal issue. The police considered it a murder and took Park into custody at the police station. According to the West Des Moines Police Department, Park claimed that there were frequent fights between her and her husband due to constant friction and that her husband used violence every time they fought. She also stated that her husband asked her to tie him up whenever he felt he would become violent, but the police did not accept this claim. Park claimed that there is evidence of her husband physically abusing her and that there are text messages remaining as proof. She specifically mentioned that there is a video on her phone where her husband agreed that it was acceptable to tie him up. However, when the police requested facial recognition to unlock the phone to see the video, she refused by covering her face with her hands. The police discovered injuries between the right thumb and index finger that appeared to be caused by being bound, and when questioned, Park explained that it was a habitual behavior of biting her fingers when she felt anxious. The police stated that the injuries were unrelated to the incident. As Nam was a U.S. citizen and their marriage was for the purpose of obtaining a green card, Park could have received permanent residency. However, she claimed that Nam continuously threatened her regarding the green card issue. During the search of Park's house, the police found a blue nylon rope, two scissors and duct tape in Nam's room. They also discovered blue surgical gloves placed on a bedside table. It appeared that she had hidden all these tools before or after calling 911. Furthermore, a note was found that indicated plans to kill her husband, which was submitted as evidence to suggest that she had plans to murder her husband. It was revealed that she submitted her resignation letter to Simpson College in September 2019. She had already planned to leave school and had plans to flee to Korea after the semester ended. Simpson College removed Park's profile from their website on February 19 and stated that the investigation is ongoing and they will closely cooperate with the investigative agencies. The police applied charges of first-degree murder because the duration of binding the husband, exceeding eight hours, was considered too long for a warning or precautionary purpose. On February 19, the police arrested her on charges of first-degree murder and first-degree kidnapping and prosecuted her at the Dallas County Jail in Iowa. During the first trial on March 13, she did not plead guilty to any of the charges brought against her. It remains to be seen whether the charge of first-degree murder will be proven guilty, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the trial is currently postponed. Park's defense lawyer requested her release on bail, stating that she has no criminal record and poses no threat to society, particularly, considering the limited visitation due to COVID-19 restrictions in correctional facilities, the defense lawyer asked for her release. However, the prosecution argued that all of Park's family members are in Korea posing a flight risk, and she is the person who killed her husband someone she was so close to. Thus, the trial should proceed with her being prosecuted. However, the judge announced that he wanted to strike a balance not only for public safety, but also for Park's health protection due to the COVID-19 virus. Since travel restrictions have been significantly tightened due to the pandemic, reducing concerns about fleeing by air, he granted her release on bail while accepting the bail bond. Currently, she is scheduled to stand trial after being released on bail.